Hey guys, in this vid I'm going to show you how to set up an in-game overlay with your system statistics showing on anywhere on the screen. Uh, so first what you want to do is download MSI Afterburner and go to the Guru 3D link because that's the one that's got all the revisions and it's easier to navigate than the MSI link. So you just scroll down. I'm using 4.4.2 because it's been great and I haven't had any issues with it. But if you're running newer hardware like RTX, then I'd recommend going for at least 4.5, which is the most recent stable build. And the betas can have bugs. So 4.5 or 4.4.2 if you're running GTX 1070 or similar specs to mine. And then after you've installed it, you, it'll open up a little... Uh, icon in the tray you'll see this airplane or it'll just pop up and then you want to go into settings and monitoring and this is where you can set up your OSD so as you can see here it's made for GPUs so core clock or anything that's labeled like memory clock it's all to do with the GPU uh, core and and memory so VRAM so once you're in there just go through anything you want to show in your overlay so by default, um, I don't think the OSD is actually turned on. Like, see how it says in OSD here? Um, it'll actually just be blank, like with fan speed. And that's because all of these graphs are actually for the the monitoring part of, of Afterburner here. So anything enabled in there is actually for this. Um, so when you turn on the OSD, it's for in-game. So see here there's an option showing on screen display so I can turn off core clock and click OK and the core clock disappears from my overlay so you basically just want to order it in the way that you want so choose you know find your GPU um, like here the default it's just called core clock but you can override the group override the group name and put GTX 1060 or whatever model of GPU you're running um, to to get it to display exactly how you want it. So if you want multiple items under one name, just look for like for example, I've got the core clock, the GPU usage, and the GPU temperature all under the one heading. Just put the same name in override group name that you want. So you can see I've got 1070 Ti, you know, I've got the same the usage and temperature and then so I've ordered it I want the VRAM showing next and you you just left click and drag it um, and you sort of just drag it like that to get it how you want so memory clock memory usage sometimes it, it can like go to the wrong spot but you can just fiddle with it and um, the best way to set it up is to open a game and set the game into uh, windowed mode so that you can have a window that you can drag around and, and once you hit OK your changes will um, take effect straight away so set that up drag it around set it how you want and then you can hit this little dot 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 um, button here next to show an on-screen display and that's to change the layout of how it looks so by default it's actually on classic which looks like this uh, it's all one color and very plain and so by hitting that little dot button it doesn't matter which one you do it under because it changes it for all of them you just change it to um, like what I like using is the new modern one but there's a few other styles too like like this one here it just changes the layout a little bit but I think uh, modern gives the most control so once you've done that just just say you want to use modern for an example uh, then you can change the individual colors by going through the colors library as it's showing here. So you just double click it, left click, and you won't necessarily know what which one what each one does straight away. But um, it's pretty easy to figure out. Like once you change it and click OK, apply, it'll change on your little uh, in-game overlay there. So you'll be able to see what you're doing. And then you can change the spacing by going through all of the options here like as you can see frame rate um, for fixed characters right and you can change it there's a drop down three fixed characters and that can change the positioning a little bit but not the position of the whole overlay Th this is just for changing the position of the actual text um, within this small area here where the overlay is showing so I've, I've just got mine set on I think I already set it up the way I wanted it like some of the spacing was a bit off 
but that's how I like it and then you can see here there's group colors so CPU usage temp temperature all of that you can set it to if you want your headings to all be one color or if you want to change the colors have like you know GPU can be green and CPU can be blue you can do that through here and the frame rate and the frame time so that's the colors part on how to get all the fancy colors and by default I think it'll be all different colors from the get-go so you'll end up with like green and red and stuff for some of the different headings and I just changed them all to the same color as you can see there because it was um, it looks neat to me that way so after you've done that then you want to change the position uh, of the actual overlay like say say you've got it in the top it default it'll be in one of the corners so you've got it in the top right corner there might be things in the game elements in the game that actually it uh, the overlay will block it so you want to move it over to the left or down or the other the, the far left corner what you do is when you're installing MSI Afterburner, it asks you to install an additional tool called Revituna Server, and always click yes to install that. So, once you've installed Revituna Server, you can you can install it after you've installed MSI Afterburner if you forgot. Um, once you've installed that, it'll come up as this little icon here in the bottom, and you actually need this for any overlay to run at all. So, um, yeah, it's it's a necessary app. So what you can do is you open that up and this is how you change the positioning and you can also change a little bit of the font but not completely you can change just basic color palette here but I'm not 100% sure if it will let's see if it oh it does it changes group tech group font there so you can change the font like that how you want how did I have it on yellow let's turn yellow and the size so you can see that this these changes are instant and then here this screen area is where you change the position so I've got it on 460 onto the right but I can move it over to the left and obviously it's gonna go off screen on oh, it there it is um, and you can adjust left to right and top to bottom and this is just through your own experimentation like it's kind of hard to tell exactly where it's gonna end up just by putting in numbers so I usually use increments of like 50 to 20 or even a hundred it just depends on how much it moves on your screen for your resolution so different resolutions need smaller numbers um, like 1080p was I think half of this so that's how you move it around and you can you can do it in increments like that if you've got it in windowed mode but as you can see it's very small movements but otherwise just click it and type the number in of where you think you want it to go and just tweak it until you get it perfect and the other thing here is you can set the font which I'm using band script semi bold and I've got it on size 7 but you can change the sizing of the individual text and font so if you want it to look a little bit different um, Cambria you can see it changes all of the font there so and that's using raster 3d mode I think default should be raster but it could be on vector you know it just looks like that it's really plain so there we go oh I've changed it too much now now I don't even know how to get it back semi bold 7 is that it? yeah okay yeah the boldness makes a big difference and then what you want to learn is tweaking for individual games because what's, what's going to happen if you leave it on global and you don't add your game exes you're going to end up with your overlay you know in the wrong spot for different games so every time you want to tweak a, a new game click add and look for your game game exe file and double click it so like for green hell for example and it'll it'll get added to this list here and you can just go to your exe for your title and adjust and tweak it like tuned per title so that's how you set up the uh, the overlay and I'll just think if there's anything else I could go over so that's it um, you can stop watching now if you should already know what to do at that point at this point um, the other thing is you can change the frame uh, yeah I can I can show you the benchmarking tool um, if you want to be able to show your minimum max and average FPS just like how I've done here like I've set a shortcut F7 F8 what you do is go into your afterburner settings go to benchmark set your recording and end recording buttons so F7 F8 for me and let's see here none of that and then go into Reva Tuner 
and go to setup and th this is I think it's per title some of some of the settings are per title so but just for global setup um, usually you want to leave frame rate averaging interval on 1000 if you set it too low it'll actually give you a lower than normal average because you're setting it to such a small number so your your average and your minimums will be off if you set it under 1000 which I've done before <laughs> And then you want to set your refresh period to whatever is comfortable for you. So how quickly you want that number to update. So you could have it updating as fast as the CSGO um, show FPS um, net, graph, net graph 1 in CSGO, which goes really fast. You can set it to like, for example, um, I'm in the wrong game. Diablo, I could set it to 10. And you'd see the, see the frame time refresh period start moving really fast and oh that's also the frame rate but it's done yeah see when I click on and off so if you want it to update like that just change that to a lower number I, I I use 100 for most of my games just because it's easier to read and you still get the average when you turn the benchmarking tool on so you don't have to worry that you're not getting uh, accurate frame rate reading and leave that on integer you can have display max frame time it doesn't really matter too much it just it's just the way that it displays it so instantaneous or the maximum so instantaneous will just be a bit quicker for frame time but I think maximum is easier to read see there okay and then you want your graph set up for when you do the benchmarks so you don't have to have a graph this is just for like seeing the frame frame um, the minimum like 1% lows and stuff so first if I do it without the graph and I hit F7 you'll see that I've, you can see the minimum the average and the max as well as 1% 0.1% lows but the graph helps you visualize that so it's easier to see when there's a dip in the frame rate or when the frame rates like running at a lower level it's, it's a lot nicer so you can set graph like that click OK and as you can see there that's the frame frame rate pretty much I hope I've got that right frame time sorry frame time so so if there's um any severe lag spikes you'll see it in the graph you can also set it to be a bit more a bit thicker like they do on the review sites So I'm not. I like diagram, but other one, one's just takes a bit more of your screen. So as you can see here, if I grab the window and move it, you'll see these spikes in the frame time because the frames were getting paused. So if there's stutter in your games, it's a good way to detect stutter. But it's also just good if you're recording and you want people to see how your system's running. Um, if there's an intensive part of the game and there's any sort of stutter going on, it'll come up in that graph. Or you can just keep it off and have the minimums and stuff. So F7, F8, and yeah. So once you've got that set up, you can you can pretty much do the same thing I do in my videos. Um, or you can diagnose problems with your system if you want to be able to see all these different uh, specs, like your CPUs, clock speed, and everything like that. Then it can be helpful for that too. So yeah, um, hopefully that helps a lot of people and. Yeah, if, you, if the video was helpful for you, uh, like and subscribe. If you didn't like the video, hit dislike. And thanks for watching, guys. See ya.